Hi everybody, this is a 7X Fan Ben, and this is Pirates with Ben, blog number 65. So I haven't done this in about four months, so I've accumulated a lot of little updates and things like that. So I want to thank you for helping me reach 200 subscribers on YouTube, which is really cool. I know the community for this game isn't too big, so to get to that number is actually pretty, pretty nice. Um, it's been just about two years since I started making videos on YouTube, so now I've got over 300 different ones. So that's nice. And recently, I did a podcast with Mike Selinker, and he's one of the original game designers of Pirate CSG, so that was an awesome podcast episode. It's over two hours, so we, we went pretty in-depth on the questions and answers, and it's probably the most important or the most insightful podcast yet of the Pirate CSG podcast, and the one before that, actually, with was with uh, James Ernest. So, and even, maybe not more exciting, but... Also really exciting is uh, some future guests this summer might include uh, Jason Michael, who I'm in contact with right now, um, the WizKids communications manager for a while. So he was involved with the flavor text and uh, the forums as well, the old WizKids forums. And there's a there's a thread up on Pirates with Ben that you can ask questions. You can ask him questions if you want. So I'll include links, of course, in the description as always. So pretty exciting stuff with the podcast. I'm not doing customs as much because Epic Pirates of the Epic Seas is pretty much done, at least for now. So both of my custom sets are always in progress, technically, but especially in terms of edits. But I'm not really adding much to either of them right now. And I'm I'm really happy. You can see the post here on the screen, and I'll include a link to it. I was really happy to get to a 1,000 total fantasy customs in Pirates of the Epic Seas. So that was really cool. And you can see the numbers. The curse got like 157 ships, 102 crew. So both of those numbers are way more than WizKids ever even gave them. And all these crew are named crew, basically. So, so you can see the distribution there. The mercenaries were the second biggest faction in the set. 96 ships, 118 crew. So, and then I've got like a little spreadsheet thing too. And of course, a link to the set. So that's why I haven't been doing customs as much. And the other reason is because Age of Sail can't be a priority because I have so many other pirate things I'd rather do. And um, there's not that many opportunities to use the customs. I'm not going to, I can't play all the time either. So I'm not going to be playing enough to use a ton of historical customs. That's why I've stopped the historical custom of the day series for now, at least. I would like to resume it at some point in the future, but I'm not really sure when. So, and that set is already really big too. That has I don't know, at least 600 pieces, I'm pretty sure. So there's plenty of historical customs to use in the meantime before even more are created. So between CG4 and the hourly campaign, I'm not really even playing all that much. So, you know, with 1,600 customs just from me alone, plus all the WizKid stuff, and then other customs from other custom creators, it just, it gets kind of crazy in a hurry. There's way more customs than almost anybody will ever be able to use over the decades. So it's kind of crazy. So and yeah, I'm really happy to have done podcasts with the game designers. And there should be some more exciting guests this summer. Um, <clears throat> so keep keep uh, keep your ears tuned for the podcast because there's definitely should be some more good episodes coming up. Might not be super high quantity, but high quality episodes. That's kind of what I'm going for this year too. So, so we've done a lot of episodes already. But now getting some high-profile uh, guests from WizKids on is, is really awesome. And then there was actually, at the Facebook Buy, Sell, Trade group, that's what the BST stands for, there was actually an uncut sheet that sold, or more than one, actually. You can see them on the screen here. I made sure to save the pictures, or at least one picture, just because I wanted to know what they would look like and just to save it for the community for posterity, hopefully. So you can see some DJC uncut sheets. I didn't even know they had these out there. I've seen them for, like, Pokemon, like the original base set of Pokemon, uh, and they sell really high there. So this was pretty cool. It's already been sold, but just a really cool thing to to take note of. And it's interesting how they printed it. I was kind of analyzing that the other day, um, looking at how the cards were aligned and things like that. Some, it was interesting. So it's a pretty cool there, collector's item. Uh, one little note. Uh, I've noticed a few people talking about lists, which confused me at first because we just call them fleets in the Pirates community. Uh, it makes sense because you might call it, it that in other collectible games like Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh or whatever, but usually those are decks for card games. So 
I'm not really sure this list uh, terminology is a little weird. So, you know, it, it just makes more sense to say fleets in the when you're talking about parrot CSG. Um, it just it just avoids confusion because the list might be I would say that would correspond more to like haves and wants lists um, in terms of collecting rather than playing, at least in my opinion, when I first see that word associated with pirates. So just my opinion. But anyway, fleets just makes it more clear, in my opinion. Uh, so the admin of miniature trading has gone inactive. So you probably noticed miniature trading has not been as good lately. So there's been some login problems, things like that. I have nothing to do with the site. I don't have any like you know ownership stake or anything. I don't know the admin personally or anything. And they haven't responded to a few of my messages. I want to say this year, maybe late last year. And now it says the actual admin user uh, is inactive. So maybe it'll come back. But uh, MT is just, I don't know. You know, we had, well, it's just, we're just lucky to still have it at all, basically, because it, it did look like for a while with the crisis last year that it could have gone down for good in November 2018. So here we are many months later, and you can still use it to some extent, and there's still a lot of great content on there. So at least it's still up sometimes. Uh, so yeah, it's been unreliable. And the house wants system and track trade system at MT is the best, of course, that we've experienced on the internet pretty much in terms of trading pirate CSG. There's other things you can do. You can trade at the buy sell trade group. Board Game Geek has some kind of trading system, and I've actually traded once through Pojo, uh, which is one of the older, uh, or not older, but one of the a classic pirate CSG forum that's pretty much dead now. But anyway, that's where I got my start in the pirates community. So I'll always love to give a shout out to Pojo. So there's other trading opportunities. And you could also try to use the private message system at my site, Parts of Them. Just obviously, I don't really, um, I'm not liable for any trade problems. If you try to work out something with somebody there, I won't know about it. So anyway, uh, so there's still trading options. And then you can you can actually go to a feedback page, put a link to this in the description below as well, uh, to give them feedback, you know, about how the site's not doing as well. Or if you can't log in, you could maybe get to this page instead. Sometimes you can use like an incognito window to actually uh, access the site in a different like window, um, which makes it seem like you're accessing it from a different device or different computer. So sometimes even if you're not already logged in and you click a link to go to MT, it'll still kick you out or like act like your login is incorrect when you didn't even try to log in. That's one thing I've had happen. So uh, it's, it's it's too bad, but. Anyway, moving on, uh, Legend of the Giant Turtle is a giant battle report I wrote after the game on May 11th. So this was the first of hopefully at least three games I plan to play this summer of 2019. So the Giant Turtle is a, a cardboard cutout from that molding you see there. And I painted some gold to make a gold shell. And then I also put some grassy areas for the, for the legs or the fins or whatever. So. That's a really cool battle report. It is really long, but I, I purposely made it really detailed and kind of extreme. There's a lot of classic pictures, really giant, beautiful pictures. So, And that's what I want to do with each game this summer, hopefully, is uh, make it kind of a, a big deal, sort of. Each game um, is going to be kind of like an event in its own right. It's not going to be like a short, casual game. They're all going to be reasonably large, probably. Um, and I'd, I'd like to do more than two more. I'd like to do more than three total. I did play a four-player game, but that was kind of unexpected. That was with a, that was not a solo game. So that was that was a different thing that happened on, I guess, May 25th it was. So the more games coming this summer, hopefully. Uh, don't get your hopes up too much, but there should be more battle ports eventually. But anyway. So the best post widget is something I did recently. So this is something I had put on my to-do list for a while. I kind of put it off for quite some time, but I, fig I figured it out. So on the homepage of my site and on most of the right-hand sidebars, not on the forum, because I like to have that be like a forum-specific sidebar, but most of the sidebars on the right-hand side now include the best posts widget, so which is pretty self-explanatory, because there, the menu is already pretty crowded. There's a lot of stuff. You know, there's three uh, rows to the main menu, and I don't really want to eliminate any of it or combine any of it into one page or anything like that. So 
I just wanted a way to kind of highlight some of the better posts or pages on my site or just things in general. So a lot of the ones towards the bottom are battle reports, things like that. But the first like four are all really interesting. You know, you can take the surveys. They're more useful than the battle reports, which I couldn't help but add some. Um, so there's 10 right now. Probably keep it at that number. I might switch them out over time. Beginner's guide and game ideas. Those are both really useful. Surveys, of course, if you haven't taken them already, there's five different ones you can check out. And then, of course, the recent podcast was just definitely one of the biggest news items of the year for Pirate CSG by far. Uh, okay, so that covers all the stuff I've been accumulating since the last vlog was on February 11th, so almost four months. So, deals of the day. Obviously, links in the description. This one is interesting. This seller has got some stuff up. Not, I wouldn't endorse all these, but I see, like, I see a lot of Revolution Rares that has the Lightning, the Banshee's Cry, the Lynx, and the Harlequin, and some other stuff, I guess. <clears throat> but what originally interested me in this page, in this seller, is some relatively cheap ships um, from some of the earlier sets, like El Leon for $1.59. The shipping is high on individual ones, so the key would be to buy a bunch and then get combined shipping. So I'm not endorsing every every deal on this page, but, you know, long shakes for $2, that is a, a great ship. So, you know, sometimes you just have to go through eBay and kind of skip some of the popular stuff or some of the random stuff at the top to find some, maybe not gems, but some decent deals. Sometimes are later down in the listings. Sometimes I like to go to the second page of search results. But, and I, well, that's kind of with a caveat, because my search results, I usually try to max it out at like 100 or 200 results, so I see a lot on one page, but anyway, so the next one, I thought this was interesting, actually, um, I know a lot of people like Mysterious Islands and the submarines, this one does have a bunch of duplicates, but that could make for great, like, trade bait, or you could even resell them individually and maybe make all your money back, potentially, this is around 40 total uh, US dollars, and you've got a lot of the mercenary subs, you got three of the Devil Ray, that's uh, one of their best gold runners, you've got some other ships here, not a complete set of the mercenaries by any means, but a pretty cool lot, and yeah, again with the duplicates, you could resell or trade to get even more value out of it than you would by just keeping them, which you could do too, giving them away to new players or whatever, but um, I think that I just thought it was a cool thing. Um, so those are the deals of the day this time around. And next up, we've got card of the day. So I'll go 1 through 14 for the set number to include Return to Savage Shores, but it will not be that set. It'll be set number 5, which is South China Seas, which is one of my favorite sets. And got the master spreadsheet up here. So South China Seas, I think it numbers to about 300. Let me just go down and see just to make sure. Because that'll be the Bauchuan. Okay, 301 with Gale Force 9. Let me go 1 to 301 and see how long it takes to get something legitimate. 126. If this is a generic crew, I'm probably not going to bother. Explorer. I think I've talked about those on Card of the Day by now. 233 is not a game piece. 225 is not either. I don't think. Yeah, it goes to 217 for the tournament LEs. So I'll keep going. 102 is probably a UT. Oh, I should try to guess. I don't think it's Trade Route. I don't know. I've saw Jade in a game lately. Or no, well, multiple games probably. Anyway, those are my two guesses, but I really don't know. I don't think it's either of those. So, Volcano. All right. That one's, ah, this one's lame, in my opinion at least. So it's a UT from South China Seas, of course. When revealed, eliminate one random treasure from the island and one random crew from every ship docked at the island. Then remove Volcano from the game. So it's kind of a, I don't know, kind of just a, a mild eruption, I guess you could call it. So there's usually not going to be that many ships docked. A lot of times, in most games, there's not that many times when an explore action happens and there's multiple ships docked at the island. It does happen, definitely, but... Uh, it's not that big of an effect, really. So, I guess based on the artwork and, you know, the name, of course, I would expect this to be much more devastating, uh, much more of a negative UT. It's negative, but it's not it's not too big a deal. There are much better negative UTs to use against opponents 
even in the same set, you could make a decent argument that Albatross is worse. Um, Pandora's box is always interesting. So this one I would give, in terms of a rating, I would probably give maybe a 4 out of 10. It's not very, it's not that interesting, and it seems kind of lame based on the artwork, which shows a pretty, what looks like a good-sized volcano. Um, so it's kind of interesting timing, too, because I've got the Ring of Fire custom uh, Mysterious Islands in the Hourly Campaign. So if you, you've been watching that, you've seen that the Ring of Fire is overpowered. So I think part of the, maybe part of the reason I made those powerful is because I'm disappointed in this unique treasure. I think volcanoes could have factored into the game a little bit more. Um, although there were some in Savage Shores, to be fair, some Mysterious Islands. I just don't have those yet. So I made the Ring of Fire custom Mysterious Islands like really devastating. So like you get like on a roll of one through four, you get at least one fire mass, I think, and your ship just gets destroyed pretty quickly and easily by fire on like a one or two. So I've had to tone that down already, and I might have to even more nix it a bit. But anyway, so the Volcano ET doesn't really live up to the name, so not not that highly recommended. Just kind of a a pretty mild negative ET that doesn't really doesn't really matter too much overall. And kind of an afterthought in terms of South China Seas, because this set did have some interesting UTs, to say the least. Fireworks is cool. Jade is actually really cool. Karmic Idol is powerful. Bad Maps is amazing and bizarre and wild. And the other one's meh. Albatross is really annoying. Pandora's Box, of course, is pretty famous, uh, including outside the game, of course. So, all right. Tech covers that. So, last up, I'm kind of rusty, so I'm just kind of... I'm not used to this as much. And the picture of the day is from Economy Edition. I've been posting usually three pictures a day on Instagram of that game, so which was played in summer 2015. So this month actually marks four years since the game was played. <clears throat> and I'm getting towards the end, actually. And this, this picture is just, I, I really love it because it shows a ton of ships. Um, you can see... On the left, you can see the pirates and their empire. The Bauchuan was recently launched. and But then you can see the curse to the right, like right there, basically. Um, so those ships in the middle heading towards the lagoon, which the pirates dominated um, at this point in the game, they're right near the curse. The curse have Terex, a couple submarines, the locker, and the pyre, basically. So, And then you can see... You can just see the bow of the delusion off to the far right. So head on over to Instagram if you want to see the retelling of that game over on there. You can follow me there if you want. And of course, <clears throat> if you just want to see it all right away or just read the battle report, um, you can just go to the Economy Edition page on my website, which is easy to find. And I'll try to remember to include a link to this URL as well. So might take a little bit of time to load about 450 pictures for this game but definitely one of my finest efforts and kind of kicked off a new era of campaign game battle reports for me at least in some ways between the pictures and the, the nice blue water some of the custom custom islands and train things like that so economy edition definitely one of my classic games um probably in the top three i would say probably so anyway hope you enjoyed this vlog um, and as of now, I'll start accumulating more things to talk about once again, probably try to do another vlog sooner rather than later, but might still be a little while. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed all the news and different features and whatnot. Um, oh, I should try to do a question of the day. Um, I should have already come up with one before the video. Maybe I'll just start asking a ton of them. <laughs> well, actually, I probably won't be able to. Yeah, eh, there's not that many really to come up with based on this stuff. I guess, do you like the Volcano UT, or do you think it should have been more powerful or more negative, basically? And then follow-up question, or not follow-up, but a different question would be, have you ever seen an uncut sheet of Pirate CSG either on eBay or in real life? Because this was the first I even heard of them. I didn't even know there were any out there until uh, when this, these ones popped up at the Facebook BST group uh, just earlier this year. So, pretty interesting stuff. So, although miniature trading is iffy, there's still some good news between the podcasts. A lot of 
there's some activity on Facebook as well. The Pirates of Ben Forum has been pretty active. Um, I just gotta, I gotta go check out Wolf's, one of his new posts right now, actually. So, and yeah, you can see the recent uh, forum replies on the right sidebar. I like seeing how they're not just me. So, you can see a bunch of users active on there. So, thanks for, uh, thanks for tuning in. And this was Pirates of Ben, blog number 65.